The human heart is capable of generating electrical signals and it uses those electrical signals to create the muscular contraction that is needed to move all that blood through the blood vessels of our body. In fact, physicians can actually study and analyze the way that the heart of the patient produces electrical signals and they can determine different types of abnormalities that might exist within the heart simply by using this tool. So this tool is known as an electrocardiogram. An electrocardiogram is a graph that describes the electrical signal that is generated by the heart. Now, how do we actually obtain the electrocardiogram? Well, we basically take special electrodes and we connect the electrodes onto the surface of the skin at special locations on the body. So six electrodes are usually placed around the heart, two electrodes are placed on the arms, and two electrodes are placed on the legs, and that creates a closed electric circuit. And if we connect the wires to a special device, that device can read the electrical signal that is generated by our heart. So we basically create an electrocardiogram that is nothing more than an XY graph where the X axis is the time and the Y axis is the voltage. So we see that the electrocardiogram is the fluctuations, the change in voltage that is produced by the heart and this voltage is used to basically generate that muscular contraction that propels all that blood through the blood vessels of our body. Now, in this lecture, we're going to study the normal electrocardiogram. We're not going to discuss any abnormalities that might exist within the heart and that might be described by an abnormal electrocardiogram. So we're simply going to focus on the brief details of a normal electrocardiogram. So let's take a look by taking a cross section at, of our heart we basically expose the four different chambers so if we're examining the heart from this angle we have the right side and the left side so this is the right side of the heart the left side of the heart the right atrium right ventricle the left atrium and our left ventricle so let's begin by looking at the different sections of the electrocardiogram. So we have a wave known as the P wave. We have an upside down Q wave, an upside down S wave. We have this R wave. We also have a T and a U wave. Now we also have points on the actual curve. So we have the points shown in blue. We have point P and point R and we have point S and point T. So let's discuss what each one of these segments and waves actually represents. Let's begin with wave P or the P wave. So let's recall where the heart actually begins, where it generates that electrical signal. So within the right atrium, within the upper wall of the right atrium, we have a collection of specialized cells that collectively are called the sinoatrial node or simply the SA node. So this is where the SA node is located. And the SA node contains cells where the membrane of, the, of those cells depolarize and that creates an electrical potential difference and that's exactly why we have an increase <clears throat> we have an increase in the voltage taking place within this portion so when the SA node generates that electrical signal, the action potential, it increases the voltage, it makes it more positive, and our electrical signal then propagates through these conduction channels shown in purple. And these conduction channels extend through the right atrium and through the left atrium. Now, when the voltage reaches its maximum, so at the peak of this wave, at the, uh, at the peak of the P wave, that is when these two atria begin to contract simultaneously. So this ventricle, uh, this atrium, and this atrium begin to contract, and as they begin to contract, they cause 
these two valves, the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve, to basically open. And, and, and as they open, the blood begins to rush into the right ventricle and into our left ventricle. Now, at the same time that our two atria begin to contract, that signal eventually reaches another specialized section known as the AV node or the atrioventricular node. And this node is located in the inter atrial septum of the heart in the wall separating our two atria. Now, when the signal arrives at the AV node, the AV node, what it does is it delays that signal by about 0.12 of a second. And what that does is, it, is it gives the atria enough time to fully contract and move all that blood into the fully relaxed ventricles. So we see along our P waves, our atria begin to contract at the tip while the ventricles are actually fully relaxed. Now let's move on to our PR segment. This PR segment basically has no voltage difference. We have a zero voltage difference and that's why we have a slope that has a zero, uh, a line that has a zero slope. And that's because within this section what happens is our AV node essentially sends that electrical signal through the bundle of his and through our Purkinje fibers. And within this segment, no contraction actually takes place. So once the AV node delays the signal, it depolarizes and sends the electrical signal through the bundle of his and our Purkinje fibers that essentially permeate through the walls of our two ventricles as shown by these purple fibers within this diagram. This does not actually cause any contraction. Now let's move on to this segment, the QRS segment, which is commonly known as the QRS complex. And this complex actually consists of three individual waves. We have the Q wave, the R uh, wave, and the S wave. Now the Q wave and the S wave are known as the downward deflection waves because they actually decrease our voltage, they make it more negative. But the R is known as our right side up or the upward deflection wave because it increases the voltage, it makes it more positive. Now, what exactly takes place within the QRS? So here we have the electrical signal that permeated through the entire walls of our right and left ventricle. And now what begins to happen as soon as we reach the maximum point of the R wave, this voltage here, contraction of these ventricles begins to take place. And as the ventricles begin to contract, there is an increase in hydrostatic pressure and that forces these two valves, the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve, to close. And when they shut close, that's exactly what causes that first sound that we hear when we listen to our heart via a stethoscope. So if we listen to our heart, we hear the lub dub lub dub sound and the lub is caused by the closure of these two valves during the QRS complex. Now, so this is when the ventricles actually begin to contract, these valves close, and the right and left atrium are now relaxing. Now the question is, why exactly is the voltage difference here so high? Well, that's because this section of the heart, the ventricles contain the thickest layer of myocardium. They have the thickest layer of muscle cell. And so that means a much higher voltage difference is needed to cause the contraction of all these muscles found within our right and left ventricle. And that's exactly why this peak is such a high peak. Now let's move on to the ST segment. What exactly takes place within our ST segment? So within the ST segment, that contraction increases that hydrostatic pressure. And what that causes is these two semilunar valves, our pulmonary semilunar valve and our aortic semilunar 
semilunar valve to basically open up. And as those valves open up, all that blood flows from the ventricles and to our arteries. So the left ventricle sends that oxygenated blood into the aorta, while the right ventricle sends our deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary arteries and eventually into our lungs. So within the ST segment, all the cells within the ventricles have been depolarized and repolarization of those cells basically begin. begin. Now, the, uh, the, uh, the semi-lunar valves, both of them actually open up and our blood begins to eject into these blood vessels. This takes place in this flat region, the ST segment, where the voltage is basically flat. Now, let's move on to our T wave and then let's take a look at the U wave. Now, what exactly happens within our T wave? So, within the T wave, we also have a slight increase in voltage. And what happens here is repolarization begins or repolarization continues. So, repolarization begins in the ST segment, but it continues and takes place fully within our T wave. So, this is when the cells of the ventricle repolarize. During this stage, the these ventricles essentially empty out all that blood into our blood vessels and because the hydrostatic pressure now decreases within our ventricles, these two semi-lunar valves close. And when they shut close, that is the second sound that we normally hear in our lub dub. So lub is when our uh, bicuspid and tricuspid valves close, but the dub takes place when our two semi-lunar valves close. We have the pulmonary and the aortic semi-lunar valve. So the QRS complex is when our bicuspid and tricuspid valves close, but the T wave is when our uh, is when these two valves right here actually close. Now, what about this last wave we call the U wave? So the U wave is usually a very small peaked wave that follows our T wave. And what we believe the U wave actually describes is the repolarization of all the cells found within the wall separating our two ventricles. So this wall is known as our interventricular wall. And what the U wave is believed to describe is the repolarization of all the cells found within this particular segment. So these are some of the segments and waves that one would normally find on a normal cardiogram. And this is exactly what they describe. They describe the propagation, the movement of our electrical signal as we have a change in voltage and that ultimately creates that contraction of our heart.